Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today we're gonna be talking about how to make your tones more rich through color. Yeah, we're gonna use the selective color adjustment layer to make our tones better. How in the heck are we gonna do that? I'm gonna show you here in just a couple seconds. So I'm gonna teach you something pretty awesome today, and that's actually using colors to manipulate the tones in our image to make those colors more rich and more vibrant and more saturated through tone, but do it in a way that actually has some class. Not like the old school way that I used to show you this with the HDR stuff where my images just looked hideous because the colors were pushed to places they shouldn't go. So what this is gonna give you is it's going to give you the ability to control the tones in your image through the use of colors, which will make our colors more rich and vibrant at the same time making our tones more natural with a governor style process. Now, when I say a governor, what I mean is that um, if you've ever seen like a Mack truck that's going, you know, 65 miles an hour on the highway and it can't go any faster than that, that's because there's a governor on the engine that says, okay, you can't go any faster than this. We wanna make sure that you maintain this speed because if you go any faster, bad stuff can happen. The same thing can happen in Photoshop that'll give you a governor so that you don't take your tones and your colors to places that they shouldn't necessarily go. So I'm going to show you this with one adjustment layer and one blend mode. And then I'm going to stack that on top of itself. And you're going to see how some crazy stuff can happen here. You got to follow along with me because I'm going to be teaching you a lot of really nerdy dorky stuff that you can really let go in one ear and out the other if you want. Um, however, if you let some of it stick and rattle around in there, you'll see exactly what's happening on these and be able to predict what's happening when you make these tonal color adjustments. Okay. So this is a pretty crazy method. I've done a lot of stuff in Photoshop with tones and colors through my Zone System Express and Palette Effects panels, and you know that if you've been following me for the last couple months. Uh, however, this method is very powerful and very effective and can make everything that you do after this even better. So follow me here. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new adjustment layer that's gonna be a selective color adjustment layer. Now, if you don't know what this adjustment layer does, I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight on it. First things first, the radio dial is here. The governor that I'm talking about that's not gonna let you go too far is by putting this on relative. If you put it on absolute, it's going to allow more effect to happen. If you put it on relative, it's only gonna use the relative color that's available in the image in order for the effect to take place. So make sure that that's set to relative. Now let's look at how this works. I'm gonna use the blues because I know there's a lot of blue in here. Basically the way the selective color adjustment works is uh, you select a color first. So I have blue selected here. And then after you select that color, you get to decide how much of a color is present in that color, which sounds really confusing, but check this out. If I move the cyan up, that's gonna make blue overall more cyan. It's not gonna be a hue rotation like you'd see in HSL. So in HSL, I'll just do that. We'll open up an HSL adjustment layer and we'll select the color blue. We'll just use the target adjustment tool to do that. If I move this over, that's a hue rotation. That is telling that color, hey, I need you to get more like this color. So that's saying blue, we want you to be more cyan. Where selective color is different, it says, okay, blue, there's a present value of cyan in you. I'm gonna make that present value stronger or I'm gonna take that present value of cyan out. And when we remove cyan from that color blue, we make that blue in turn more red. So basically the way this works, you have to know a little bit about color theory. The opposite of cyan on the color wheel is red. The opposite of magenta on the color wheel is green. The opposite of yellow on the color wheel is blue. The digital color wheel, not the painter's color wheel, okay? Let's not, let's not go down that rabbit hole. But the digital color wheel, the opposite is red. So if I move this down, I'm gonna get more red present in the color blue. If I move it up, I'm gonna get more cyan present in the color blue. Let's do this with magenta. If I move the magenta up, we're gonna add magenta, more magenta percentage to the color blue. If I remove a percentage of that magenta, we're gonna add more green to the color blue. If I go to the color yellow here, I'm gonna add more yellow to the color blue, or if I move it down, add more blue to the color blue. So if I wanted to make these blues more rich and more natural, I'd probably add, remove some of the yellow from them, add some magenta to them, and then maybe add a little bit of cyan to them. And that's how I would get a more natural, bluer, richer looking sky. And that's all fine and well, they aren't that far, they aren't taken too far, uh, but there's that governor place anyway, so I can't take them too far even if I wanted to. So now I said at the beginning of this, I'm gonna teach you how to use color to manipulate tone. So how in the world are we gonna tell a selective color to be a tonal adjustment and not just a color adjustment? 
Well, the way we do that is I'm just going to go ahead and move this down here and delete this. We're going to make a new selective color adjustment layer. We're going to change this to the luminosity blend mode. Now, what that says is it says, okay, I'm the selective color adjustment. I'm going to make color adjustments to this image. But because you're telling me restrict my adjustments only to the luminance values that are underneath me, that means I'm not going to let any color go on the image. So what that means is that we get some really refined tonal adjustments through color sliders. It's a really powerful trick. So check this out. We are in the color blue. Watch what happens if I add magenta to the color blue. Now the color blue doesn't actually change. The color itself actually isn't changing here. Perceptually, it looks like it is, but it's not. What's happening is the tonal values in the color blue are increasing, making it appear as if it's a different color, but it's just a more intense version of that color blue. And we know this because if we increase the black here, look at that. We're just making that blue more of an intense or higher value, richer in value, richer in luminance blue. Now, if we go here, we move the, the yellows. We can move that up. That's going to make it a little bit darker or a little bit brighter if we move it down. Now, what you'll see is that the cyan slider and the yellow slider are not quite as intense as the magenta slider. And why do you think that is? Well, it's like that because, as I told you before, we have to think about this in terms of RGB and CMY. So red and cyan, green and magenta, blue and yellow. Now, what's happening here is you have to think about the Bayer matrix sensor. The Bayer matrix sensor that records our images actually is 50% green pixels, 25% red pixels, and 25% blue pixels. So the slider that's gonna have the most effect on these tonal values is going to be this magenta slider. Why? Because its counterpart on the color wheel is green, which if there's 50% more pixels here in the green channel, then we're gonna have more of an effect with the magenta slider, okay? so. Follow me. I said that this was going to be some nerdy dorky stuff, but it's really powerful. If you just want to experiment with this and throw a selective color on there with a luminosity and move things back and forth, you can do that. Really simply stated, check this out. You have that selective color, luminosity. Whatever you move to the right is going to make those tones in that color more rich. Whatever you move to the left is going to make them brighter. Without the nerdy dorky stuff, move it to the right, it gets darker. Move it to the left, it gets brighter. So let's go to the yellows. So yellows are actually going to be present right down in here. So we are still in the luminosity blend mode, which means as we increase this, we're going to get more value or more intensity in the color yellow. If I move up the magenta, you see that that gets a lot more rich there. Look at that. The yellow slider is not going to do much because there's not much data there and there's not going to be much effect in the cyan slider either. Okay. But look at what happened here. We have a much more tonally rich image much more tonally rich. It actually looks really refined. And we're doing it with that governor in place, which says, hey, I'm going to take this to a certain degree. But even if you move all of these things all the way up as high as they can go, I'm not going to give you something that's bad. All right. Because you put this governor in place that says, hey, uh, this is as far as I can go. Now, if we duplicate this by pressing Commander Control J, it's going to start to get more rich because we're doing the same thing twice to the colors that exist underneath there. Let me go ahead and delete that copy here. So this is still selective color for the tones. I'm going to move this down a little bit, get this back to where we were. Um, that looks pretty, pretty good right there. Not too bad. So if we go into another color, like maybe the cyans, what happens here? Well, we're still in, we're in the color cyan. We've got the luminosity blend mode, which means that the settings that I use here are only going to affect the tonal values of the cyan color. So let's increase the magenta in the cyan. Let's maybe increase the amount of cyan in the color cyan and yellow in the cyan, which is basically just gonna, again, make it more intense and make it more rich. Look at how much more rich and intense that blue sky is. That's incredible, that's really powerful. This is some really powerful tonal adjustments. I've done a lot of things with tone and color. You know that my workflow is tone, color, artistic effects, right? Well, I'm telling you, what I'm doing here with this selective color adjustment set to the luminosity blend mode is very effective for every photo. And you've got that relative adjustment in there that, that makes it so that there's a governor built in. What I mean by that is even if we were to take something like the curves adjustment layer and turn this to the luminosity blend mode and then start moving this around, there's no governor here. You can get some pretty good tones in there, right? But it's there's no governor. There's no limit as to what's available there. And, it, and the curve doesn't say, okay, you've got a certain percentage of the color blue in here. Because of that, I'm only going to do X, Y, Z. No, it's not smart enough to do that. The curve's adjustment's like, hey, you do whatever the heck you want on this, and I'll give you that result. Where a selective color is like, hey, hold on a second, buddy. There's not that much presence of the color blue, so I can't do that, which is awesome. Here's the next level thinking on this one. Now that we've got this, let's call this SC or selective color for tones. Let's take this another level and we'll put a selective color adjustment on top of there. And now we're going to work with both tone 
and color. So when we have this set to tone and color and we go in something like the color blue and we remove some of the yellow from the color blue and then maybe um, add some cyan and some magenta there. Look at how color rich that now is. And it does it in a classy way. That's not like taking the um, HSL adjustment layer and telling the saturation to become stronger in the color blue. But if we don't have that tonal adjustment underneath, look, it practically does nothing. Isn't that really wild? So this, this tonal adjustment is also helpful to build a base and a foundation for increasing the, the quality of the colors in our image as well. So I'll reduce some of this stuff here because it's a little bit powerful. Okay, and then let's go into the color yellow. So now that we increase the richness of the colors of yellow in here, look what happens when we start doing some stuff like this. Ooh, look at that. Look at those yellows and how rich and beautiful they're getting. Uh, it's really starting to look like half dome there uh, when I was up there in Yosemite. So look at that. Those yellows are really nice. But look, this basically has no effect on those yellows. So we needed to boost up the, that tonal quality of those colors in order to get more out of the color that was in there. Again, my workflow is tone, color, artistic effects. Why do you think I always tell you to do tone first, then color? Because when we increase or decrease the amount of tone that's available in our image, especially when we do it globally, it's also going to increase or decrease the intensity of the colors in our image. So then when we go to modify the colors in our photo, guess what? We've already got the tonal base built. When we go to modify the colors, it looks even better. Here's the really crazy part though. If we were to go into this that we did for tones and we were to change this to normal, look at what happens to this. It is not good. You know, these colors look hideous. When we change this to the luminosity blend mode here, we are literally stripping away the color adjustment and saying, you, selective color adjustment, are not actually going to do anything to the colors. I just want you to affect the tonal value of the image. Again, this is some nerdy, dorky stuff, but if you just take it from me and say, okay, selective color adjustment with a luminosity blend mode, whatever we move right in a color is going to darken it. Whatever we move left is going to brighten it. And you call it good and you're done. You don't have to think about the ner nerdy, dorky stuff and what's happening with the bare matrix sensor and all the other stuff that's happening when we are doing this tonal manipulation in our colors. This is some powerful stuff. I've been exploring with this a lot lately with some of my images. And uh, I have to tell you, this is probably one of the hardest tutorials that I've ever recorded because of the nerdy dorky stuff that gets in the way of thinking about what's happening with these sliders as we move these sliders to get different tonal values. It makes no sense at all. It really doesn't until you actually break it down and think about it. We're telling the selective color adjustment to now be only a tonal adjustment by using the luminosity blend mode and getting all the power of the governors and the uh, real naturalistic effect of the selective color in place but doing it for our tones. All right, Blake Rudis here signing off. If you like this tutorial, please comment on it, like it, share it, subscribe, tell a friend. Um, I guarantee someone's gonna benefit from this if you let them know. <laughs> like, hey, and if you haven't gotten one of your photography buddies a Christmas present yet, just go ahead and send them this video. <laughs> They're gonna thank you for it. Okay, and they might not even want anything after you send it to them. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.